Hello, I'm Poser P, and we're back uh, with the next video in my series on programming the Kurzweil PC3. So uh, from this point on, we're going to be talking a lot about application. There will be some synthesis and um, various other things mixed in with that. Um, we'll cover effects and, and, and things like that, but it's all going to be now in the context of actually using the stuff that we've been learning about. And, and um, we're going to talk about how to program different kinds of things on the PC3 and hopefully cover a broad spectrum of stuff. Uh, today we're going to start with um, a happy accident that happened about a week or so ago uh, when I was looking into stuff to the uh, into the audio rate modulation stuff that we've been talking about in the other videos. Um, and this happy accident just so happens to produce a sound that is like, is not the same as, but is like a uh, super saw uh, that you'd find on the JP8000 and um, you know, half a gazillion trans records that came about because of that. So let me go ahead and call up um, a sound that I've been working on that uses this technique so you can hear what it sounds like. Here we go. So let me hold some notes so you hear what that uh, actually sounds like. Now, I'm not a keyboard player, believe it or not. Um, so my keyboard playing sucks, but uh, you'll get a sense of, of how this sounds. And we'll go ahead and we'll take off all the effects. Okay, and all I'm going to do is add release to it. There we go. So now you can hear the natural evolution of the note over time as I, as I hold something down. Also notice that when I hit a same, the same note over and over again, each time I hit it, the note sounds different. Now there's no effects on there, okay? Um, that's just because of the way I have this set up, it is phase unlocked, and so every time you hit the note, it sounds slightly different. Okay, so let's program this. Um, we're going to start here on the key map page, and I'm going to pick a sine wave. I'm going to do this for um, uh, efficiency and programming. I want to do that sound that you just heard more or less in a single layer, so that we only burn one layer with our um, awesome super saw hijinks, so we can have like 128 notes playing at the same time, because you know that's how it goes with trance. All right, so let's go ahead and go to the alg page, and we're going to pick algorithm 103. I picked this because it has this alt input, and with the alt input, I can combine that with PW mod to create a source of DC current. Okay, so your audio rate signal goes from positive full scale to negative full scale. Okay, this is like a sine sort of a wave, right? With DC, it's just like a, a straight line, basically. And you can use that to push, so let's say you have a signal like this, you can use that to push it or apply DC offset to it so that uh, you can move it essentially up and down relative to what would be the y-axis over here, um, uh, which is um, which is amplitude, and this would be time. So you can move the amplitude of it up uh, relative to 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 the y-axis. Okay, uh, so let's go ahead and use an x fade, x gain block here. We're going to put a saw plus over here, and we're going to put a shaper here. Okay, with everything set up this way, uh, let me go ahead and uh, do the usual stuff over here. We're going to set this to zero. We're going to crank this down quite a bit. Um, I'll bring up the slider slowly. Okay, nothing too exciting there. Um, we've succeeded in making a sawtooth wave that we could have done with one block with four blocks. Yay. But the fun comes when we start to modulate this stuff. So uh, I like to take this down 12 steps. Now, a lot of this stuff I have found um, through experimentation. Um, so I can't tell you exactly how all of this works together to create the sound that we're going to do. But I know that it works. So, um, and that's the beauty of this. There's lots of happy accidents to be found on the PC3. Uh, and I am sure, and I really hope, that if you're watching this video, you'll be inspired to go find happy accidents of your own and come up with your own sounds, you know? Somebody came up with that super saw sound, and who knows, maybe they're just trying to do 80 string sounds 
um, a lot more efficiently, uh, computationally speaking, in a digital synth, and then inspired, you know, a whole genre of music, whether you like it or not, um, is another matter. But anyway, um, so let's go ahead and we're going to start with this X gain block. So what uh, the gain does here is this applies essentially to the output. So we're going to go ahead and put about 16 dB of uh, control over this on slider A. Then slider B is going to control shaper amount. Now shaper amount goes from um, essentially 0 to 4. And we're going to go ahead and, whoops, um, I want this to be 5, 0, 0, sorry, over here. We're going to give it two clicks. And we're going to put that on slider B. Okay. And then slider C is going to be our detune. Okay. This is going to essentially adjust the depth of the uh, detuning effect that we're going to be applying. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do this down to minus 22, and I'm going to do this one to plus 22. So I'm adjusting the detune between um, the sine wave and the saw plus wave. Okay, so the sine wave is applying that DC offset that we were talking about earlier, um, and it's being or it's it's modulating the PWM, which is essentially DC, to apply that variable DC offset. And then um, we're going to uh, set some of the other things here. We're going to put this at 6. Uh, whoops, that's not 6. That's 6. 6 dB uh, padding on the shaper. So a sound like this is extremely sensitive to gain. Because we're using shaper, that's just how shaper works. Shaper responds quite a bit to gain. So uh, a lot of what you're going to do uh, when you're playing around with Shaper is trying to find gain amounts that you think sound good for different applications. So I'm going to go ahead without any detune. I'm just going to mess with sliders A and B real quick. So that's slider A. Now we're going to mess with slider B. And then add some slider A too. That's kind of like a hard sync sound. And so this is this is useful for doing that as well. Uh, so this can do a lot more than just the super uh, supra saw. Um, maybe we'll call it a distress saw, I don't know. But uh, you can get a lot more sounds out of what we're creating here than just um, that super saw-ish sound. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna set slider A down to about two or three bars from the top. Slider B is going to be all the way at the bottom. Now I'm going to bring in slider C. Okay. So there is essentially the basics of our sound. Um, let's go ahead and we'll put this padding at 12. Let's see how that sounds. Oh, and let's see, that might be a little too much. Okay, yeah, I think about right there is about perfect. So again, a lot of this is adjusting to taste and experimentation that's going to allow you to find the uh, settings that work for you. I'm gonna go ahead to the envelope control plate page and I'm gonna put some release on this. Um, I'm gonna put that on slider 27 and we'll take the depth all the way down. So, so as we put release on here, we get um, more of that characteristic um, um, super saw, hyper saw, super saw, whatever kind of saw you want to call it, kind of a sound. Now you can do some other fun things in here. For instance. You can go here to the DSP control page. Um, let's set this down and let's knock that up a click. And so what this will do is even with the slider all the way down, we'll still get a bit of motion in there. There we are. 
So slider A, uh, in this particular instance, which is controlling the, um, the gain coming out of that um, X gain block, that's going to have uh, quite a bit of an effect on the character of the sound, as is slider B. There, that's pretty close to um, a usable super saw sound for trance, but you can hear how big that is. You know, and that's just four blocks. Um, in the sound that I demonstrated at the beginning of this video, I've duplicated it twice and I've detuned um, the this this layer against itself and, and done some other things to make it sound, you know, even bigger and more massive or whatever. Um, so there are lots of things that you can do with this. Uh, you can tack on filters uh, and so on and so forth, but do not underestimate all the other fun sounds that this can do uh, with the sync stuff. So like for instance, And some of them will sound better with the pitch offset, some of them won't. I mean with the detuning. And so you can experiment with this, play with it, do lots of other fun things with it. Uh, and I encourage you to do so because there are probably other ways that you can do a sound similar to this. Um, the PC3 has its own super saw block, um, which isn't exactly like a super saw. Um, there are, in the Forte, I know that there's a super saw patch that uses, I think, like eight layers. Um, so all of those are useful for different things. Um, this is yet another way to approach that kind of a sound. And I'm sure that there are others out there that are waiting to be discovered. And I hope that somebody who watches this, this video will be inspired to go out and find those. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time, and we're going to leave um, with a little bit of music.